And now we've reached the part where we can actually properly talk about normal distributions in general. To do that, we'll think about where we've started um, our journey with normal distributions, namely um, the standard normal distribution. So what's so helpful about the standard normal distribution is we can use its properties and learn about the probability calculations and finding percentiles and critical values. Um, and that all, we can take that with us as long as we um, understand how to properly transform a random variable. So here's the idea. A standard normal distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And while that is fine, I mean, that's its properties, there are few, relatively few, real world uh, scenarios in which something genuinely has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one and there's no trace of units. So what might be helpful then is if we have a specific mean in mind and a specific standard deviation in mind, why couldn't we modify the standard normal distribution to have these characteristics? And to do that, we're going to perform a linear transformation. So when we say linear, we really mean that we're only allowed to do a few things to such a random variable. Okay, so we have some random variable x and suppose a and b are real numbers. It'll be more interesting if neither of them are zero or if only one of them is zero, um, but it doesn't matter. So what we can do is we can take the random variable t, which is a multiplied by x plus b. So what we've done is, is take this random variable, and it may be helpful to think about the random outcomes that we get. So if our random outcomes are 1, negative 1, whatever they may be, so we can have a table here, an x table, and a t equals ax plus b table. For the sake of transparency, or for the sake of clarity, let's just you know pick some specific values. Let's say a is 2 and b is 1. So our transformation is actually going to be 2x plus 1. And whatever our random values happen to be, so maybe we have negative 1.1, 1 .1, 2, uh, 1.7, then we're just going to multiply each random outcome by 2 and add 1. You may think of this as this is a function of this random variable, and you'd be right on the money. That is actually what we're doing. Um, and what's so helpful about this is this is going to change some key characteristics about our random variable. So we're going to preserve the shape, the overall shape of the distribution, but we're going to change the center and the um, we're going to change the center and the variation. So let's just quickly you know hammer out these values. So we've got a negative two point two plus one, which is um, that'll be negative 0 0.8. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 gives us 5. And 2 times 1.7 is 3.4 plus 1, and that's 3 4.4. Uh, so if we started out with values that were, you know, relatively close to 2, maybe, you know, lower in value uh, in magnitude, then what our transformation might do, depending on what the values of A and B are, is it might scale them up and, and shift them. So for that reason, 
we call A the scale factor for the transformation because it scales up or down, and B is the location factor. All right, so what's the punchline? So let's say that we're interested in a normal distribution that has a mean. So we want x to be normally distributed with a mean of mu. So its location, right, is going to be centered around a mu and a standard deviation of sigma. So its scale, we want it to be sh um, spread according to sigma. And visually what's happening here is if we have our standard normal distribution here, maybe, right? So here's zero, here's one, here's negative one. On that same axis, maybe what we want to do is we want to shift it so that we have something that looks more like this. So what's happening now is we've now shifted the mean, the center, and rescaled in terms of the spread of this distribution. It's still a normal distribution though. So what's happening here is x is the linear transformation of sigma times the standard normal distribution plus the mean. So specifically, our, um, our scale factor, remember this is the scale factor, and this is our location factor, correspond exactly to mean, to sigma and mu. And that's what it means to have a non-standard normal distribution. It is a normal distribution. Um, and so what this equation suggests then, this is actually a really important key relationship, what this relationship suggests, and we'll explore this in more detail in a later video, is that for every support value, every random outcome that we can get, we can get its corresponding z-score, so the actual random outcome, so actual random outcome, we can get its z-score by turning this equation on its head. And by doing so, we can retain all the tools that we've used with standard normal distributions and apply them to questions of probability here. 